Welcome to Building the Future. I'm your host, Kevin Horick. You can check out new episodes of the show every Tuesday and Thursday at 2 p.m. If you missed an episode or want to get more information about the show, please visit buildingthefutureshow.com. SUPEX, the Startup Expo, North America's premier startup conference, is March 6th and 7th, 2017, in sunny Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Affordably priced, SUPEX is a two-day international conference featuring workshops, panels, speeches, a $50,000 startup competition, and over 100 exhibitors. For more information, go to sup-x.org. Welcome back to the show. Today we have the Alpha Gear team, and they're also the founders of the Hardware Cup. Guys, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks. Good to be here. Yeah, I'm excited to have you guys on the show. You guys are kind of doing a lot of really interesting things in, in a few kind of verticals that are all kind of related to each other, but kind of unique in their own way. So maybe before we kind of get into exactly what you guys are doing, Let's give each of one of you a chance to kind of give introduce yourself and kind of give a quick bio and of who you are. Sure. Well, um, my name is Alana Diamond, and I'm the managing director now of Alpha Lab Gear, which is an accelerator for early stage physical product companies. Okay. We help folks who have an idea or just an early stage product, surround them with resources, invest in them, and get them to the stage where they can raise serious investment and scale their business. And uh, before I did that, I ran a consumer electronics company for more than 15 years. Uh, we had brands like First Alert and MGM Studios and Cherokee Electronics. Wow. And we designed and manufactured uh, consumer electronic accessories. Uh, we manufactured them both in Asia and in the U.S. and in other countries. And we sold them to folks like Best Buy and Walmart and Target and Amazon. Um, and I... Uh, sold that company in 2010. We also had a spin-out company that did commercial alerting under the First Alert brand. Uh, we raised capital for that, hired a team, and uh, sold that company in 2015. So um, that's how I started running Alpha Lab Gear. I was mentoring and in the community, and when um, Innovation Works, which is our parent organization, decided that they'd like to start an accelerator for physical product companies, they tapped me, and I've been doing that ever since. That's great. Excellent. Um, so I, uh, my name's Chris. I am program manager at Alpha Gear. Uh, I have a uh, background in software uh, marketing design. I uh, had uh, a couple of startups. One that was funded through our sister accelerator, Alpha Lab, um, in uh, 2012. Um, I was out on the West Coast uh, and started a web design startup out there. Uh, in 2013, uh, but my wife was still in Pittsburgh, and so she made it very clear that uh, I needed to come back. <laughs> and so I did it right around the same time that uh, Alpha Lab Gear was opening up. So I run operations here, uh, and I started the Hardware Cup with uh, Alana back in, what was it, 2014 now, I think? Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, so... Um, you know, I have a background in, uh, in marketing and design. I've learned a lot about uh, the IRP and robotics and VR and AR space in the past couple of years. And uh, it's been really, really exciting to see uh, these industries take off and, uh, and where we're headed. Sure. That's great. And I'm Leah simon -Selly. I'm the operations manager for the Alpha Lab Gear Hardware Cup. I come at this from a very different angle, which is my background in marketing and PR. Um, started out with restaurant marketing, moved to educational marketing in South America, and now here I am in the startup hardware space. Got you. No, that's that's really cool. So let's maybe um, start off and dive a little bit kind of deeper into exactly kind of what you guys do. Like, I, I get that you guys are kind of running an accelerator, but what exactly are you guys kind of doing and maybe kind of give a high level of what exactly innovation works and then we'll kind of get into a little bit more into Alpha Lab and uh, the Hardware Cup? Sure. Well, Innovation Works is one of the most active seed stage investors in the country, always in the top 10. It's number one in that mid-Atlantic region. Uh, and then... Um, 
we also have a follow-on fund uh, called Riverfront Ventures that does larger uh, investments. So Innovation Works helps um, companies get up and running. It provides mentorship and uh, investment and connections and networks to um, early stage tech companies. And I would say about five years ago, uh, well, about eight years ago, they started an accelerator, one of the first accelerators in the country called Alpha Lab for software companies. And uh, they surrounded software companies with all of these resources and were scaling them and doing really well, got some good exits. Uh, and at about five years ago, they started thinking, hmm, hardware's changing. And some of the same things that allowed software companies to start up with fewer funds and fewer people and people and make more progress quickly, some of those same things are happening in the hardware space. You know, there was open, soft, open source software that let software companies um, put together a prototype very quickly and test it. Now there was open source hardware, the Arduino, the Raspberry Pi, some of these hardware platforms that let people hack together a prototype, get it into a customer's hand, test it, fix it, improve on it. Those things were happening. Another thing that was happening was um, software you could distribute without going through any um, intermediary like a retailer. Uh, but physical product, you know, you had to actually ship them somewhere and you had to convince a retailer to put them on the store if it was a consumer product. And with crowdfunding and things like Indiegogo and Kickstarter uh, and also e-commerce, it was allowing folks who have a cool new product to get right to their target market and sell directly and cut out, you know, all the expense of a, a, a middleman. And the third thing that was really happening that Innovation Works saw well, it used to be that if you wanted to create a prototype, you needed to buy millions of dollars of equipment, sure. expensive, you know, CNCs, CAD, CAD software, 3D printers, all that, you know, all that kind of equipment. Uh, or you had to work for a big company that had it. And with the advent of maker spaces like a tech shop, where for the price of a gym membership, you can get access to millions of dollars of equipment and create early stage prototypes and even do some um, small early um, uh, manufacturing runs, uh, it, it opened that up to anybody who had an idea. And so all those things came together, and Innovation Works felt that the whole lean startup methodology, which allows just a couple of people in a garage with an idea to create a business and show that customers want it and reduce the technical risks so investors will invest, all those things were now true of hardware too. And so as a result of that, we founded Alpha Lab Gear, which is an accelerator for physical product companies. And we have a space here in Pittsburgh. It's an, um, a national accelerator. So we attract companies from across the country and around the world. We we'll all move here into our space. We invest in them. We surround them with mentorship. We provide them with uh, access to maker type tools and memberships in tech shops. We get them uh, incorporated for free. We get their intellectual property filed for free. We provide them to free with free access to components and SDKs and all sorts of mentors, over 100 mentors in different specialties, and get them to the point after eight months in our program where they are um, interesting to investors who are willing to put in a seed stage round or maybe even a Series A and let them scale that business. So that's what we do. Sure. That that's great. I, I love that. I, I think what you guys are doing is, is super important because you kind of touched on it a little bit earlier that there was a period of time where investors really kind of stayed away from hardware because it costs so much. And to your point that it's come down a lot now and it's like affordable to build prototypes, even kind of in the States, never mind trying to go to China. You might have to at some point, but you know, you can you can do that in in North America nowadays. And, and I love um, exactly kind of what you do. And you kind of do, kind of gave a pretty good overview of exactly what the accelerator does. But how do you guys kind of decide who gets accepted? And kind of what do you guys kind of look for in the program? So we're looking for companies that um, with the investment that we're going to give them, and the resources that we have to surround them with can get to a point where um, 
they've reduced enough technical risk and shown enough customer traction that investors are going to be willing to take a risk on them. So that next inflection point, and we're looking for companies that um, at their core are solving a really big problem, that their solution is significantly better than the next best alternative, and that if they solve that problem, there are enough people out there, there's a big enough market that it could really scale. And so those are the same things that investors look for. They're, they're looking for something that uh, if you're successful at what you say you're going to do, it's going to be big. And the second thing they're looking for is that you have taken out some of the technical risk. You know, you're, you've proven that you can do what you say you're going to do. And uh, you've shown that if you do it, somebody will actually want it. So really that's customer traction, reduction of technical risk, and solving a big problem that has a lot of people who have the problem, so it's a big market. And that's really what we look for. Sure. I'd say the other thing that really separates, uh, you know, some of the, the, the top applicants to our program is the team, right? You not only do you have to sort of check the boxes of you're solving a big problem and technically you can build it, but you have to have a team that has shown momentum, that has shown grit, that is going to be able to overcome all of the challenges that you're going to face as a small hardware startup. And I think, you know, more than anything else, we look at, at uh, you know, momentum or, uh, you know, sort of looking at their past and seeing how they've overcome these great obstacles previously. I have confidence that this team is going to be able to deliver when they face all these other hurdles. Sure. No, yep. I, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was going to say yes. I think, and I, I'd add to what Chris says, is it's really important to have a good understanding of what things they know and have under control and what things they need help with and don't know. And um, together with the passion and the grit, it's also having a good, uh, being self-reflective and understanding where they're going to need help and what things they really have under control. Sure. That, that makes a lot of sense. And the fact that you guys have the ability to help them get investment kind of once they're done the accelerator, I think is actually super important, right? Because, Chances are they may or may not be from kind of the Pittsburgh area and they might have to go back to where the city they came from. Yes, although I will say about 95% of our companies get follow-on investment at the end of the program. Okay, interesting. Um, yeah, okay. So I'm curious then, how does how does it kind of work with kind of, the, the program, like walk me through the courses and stuff that I take with the program. Chris? Yeah, so it's an eight-month program. Uh, we start uh, just after Labor Day and uh, usually finish in the spring. So, yeah, and, you know, we also surround all of our companies, like Alana said, with, you know, we have over 100 mentors in the mentor network, and they're split up into sort of three main buckets. We have entrepreneurs that have, you know, built – uh, and scale and exited companies, uh, we have a number of industry experts that help the companies. You know, that could be everything from industrial design to e-commerce to marketing to B2B enterprise sales, whatever it is. They're, they're a deep ex expert in that field. And then we also have a chunk that are investors, either angels or VCs. Sure. No, I, I think that's good, right? And it's really interesting to have that because I think... A lot of people, at least that I've talked to, don't even really know where to kind of start, right? And I think having an accelerator like you guys do is is super important and very, you know, useful to people. And I, I love the fact that you guys actually did this and you've had a bunch of companies through through the program already and you're you're seeing tons of success, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh I think collectively the first three cycles have raised over, I think it's like 15 or $16 million wow. in follow-on funds. That's incredible. And we just had we just had our first exit in October. So well, the congrats. We finished the accelerator program, yeah. Uh, and two years later, they had an exit. That's amazing. And that's extremely quick for, for a hardware startup because even like, what, maybe five, three to five years ago, chances are sometimes it took you that long to even get like a prototype and maybe you had a product in the market by then, right? Like sometimes it took months or years to even kind of get first version of your product, at least in my experience. 
No, I think you're right, but um, in the eight-month program, in our eight-month program, close to 70% of the companies have a, um, a beta product in the market and have paying customers. Wow, that's, that's incredible. So, that's incredibly fast. I love that. So I, I'm curious, you guys also do this National Hardware Cup. What exactly is it and why did why is it important and what do you and you guys are doing it across North America. So what exactly is it? So it's kind of a funny story. So you, you talked earlier about how, you know, a lot of times investors don't don't like to invest in hardware. And when we started um, our program in, in twenty thirteen, you know, we, we have a number of investors in our network. We had them sort of coming in and talking to the companies and a lot of them sort of said that same thing, right? They say, oh, hard, hardware is hard. You know, there's too much manufacturing list, risk. It takes too long. It costs too much money. We don't invest in hardware. And then, you know, one or two of those investors turned around and 18 months later invested, you know, almost $4 million in one of our companies. Wow. So we saw there's this disconnect sort of between mindset of, you know, a lot of VCs around the country and all of the recent developments in the hardware startup landscape, you know, just like Alana said, the open source hardware, maker spaces like TechShop opening up, crowdfunding platforms becoming available to show market traction. All of this made it quicker and easier uh, to get a hardware startup off the ground. Um, and so one of the reasons why we started the Hardware Cup is because we wanted to, to sort of highlight and bring attention to all of the entrepreneurial activity in hardware around the country. And like you said, a lot of people don't even know where to start, right? They're like, I sort of had this idea for a product, you know, you know, maybe I'm an engineer, maybe I just like tinkering with things. I've sort of built something out of my garage. What do I do from here? So in each city, we pulled together uh, community stakeholders and experts. We, we had successful hardware CEOs, you know, have manufacturing and, and design experts and VCs, and we hold a panel on how to build a successful hardware startup, right? What are the stages of prototyping? What do you need to do to de-risk the tech, to de-risk the market? What makes an investable hardware startup? After that, we hold a pitch competition um, with some of the region's top hardware companies. So we have an online application, you know, 50, 100 startups apply. We take the top five, and they have four minutes to pitch their company. The judges, which are composed of local VCs and investors, will have five minutes to ask questions. And, you know, at the end, the judges will go confer for, you know, 15, 20 minutes, and they'll come up with a regional winner. Uh, that regional winner uh, this year gets a $3,000 cash prize wow. plus a year-long license to SolidWorks software. And they're also entered into the national finals. Um, after we go to all of our regions, we bring all the regional winners to Pittsburgh to compete in the national finals. And the winner gets a $50,000 convertible debt investment courtesy of Starbot. Wow, that that's awesome. So... What cities across the country are you guys going to be in? Leah, you want to take that? I can take that one. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, so the way that we have divided it this year is into regional competitions. Okay. So I'll go through the list of CDs, of CDs, of cities, but I want to be clear that if you're not located in one of those cities, you're absolutely welcome to apply to participate, and we will actually provide a travel stipend to any of the teams that are selected as a regional semifinalist to go to that regional event. So we will be hitting on the West Coast, Los Angeles, Mid-Atlantic will be in Pittsburgh, the Northeast Regional will be in Boston, Southeast Regional will be in Fort Lauderdale as part of the Startup Expo, yep. and the East Coast Regional will be in D.C., the Midwest Regional in Chicago, the Southern Regional in Austin. So those are all of our regional competitions. And that first one in LA is actually going to be part of SolidWorks World, which is a huge conference with thousands of people. So we're very excited to be starting off there. And um, applications are launched. So if anyone is interested in applying, and that would be any early stage hardware startup that builds a physical product, you can go to hardwarecup.com and get some more information on um, the different regions, and there's a link to apply there. Okay, so you, you kind of touched on a little bit, but like, what are you guys kind of looking for 
um, with people that are, you know, looking to be part of this hardware cup? Like, I, I get hardware, but is there specific kind of industries or focus or, or not really? Or, or kind of what exactly are people expected to kind of bring to the hardware cup? So it's any company that makes a physical product, right? So, okay. And that's sort of, you know, and that fits in line to what we do at Outblack Gear, right? It could be robotics. It could be Internet of Things. Uh, it could be medical devices. It could be VR, AR. Um, you know, we have a, a lingerie company that's been part of our cycle. They're oh, interesting. Some, some okay. High-tech lingerie, you know, e-textiles or wearables, right? Anything, um, you know, that... It might have a software component to it, but you have to basically make some sort of physical product. From a personal standpoint, I'm very, very excited about the VR and AR landscape. Um, just, you know, even in looking at VC dollars, right, I think in 2015 there was something, I don't know, it was like $686 million or something like that uh, put into VR and AR. I think it was over $2.3 billion in 2016. Our winner last year was a, a VR camera, and I would love to see more applications in that vein because I feel like there's a lot of um, potential. There's a lot of land to grab in that, uh, that VR and AR space. And I'd also like to say that we've had a wide range of winners across industries, you know, including things like food and fashion and uh, even chemicals. So, um, you know, we define hardware very broadly. It's anything physical. And uh, if you looked at the list of folks who won the uh, regional semifinals in the past couple of years or who were actually uh, first, second, or third place in the finals, it's, it's really amazingly broad. Uh, we had an energy company, as Chris pointed out, that was in 2015 last year. Uh, as Chris pointed out, there was a VR company. We had a food company the year before that. There have been safety companies. There have been transportation companies. So it's really all about um, something unique that is solving a big problem in a way that is much better than the next best solution and that if they solve it, it's going to be huge. So that's what the judges tend to like. Sure. That, that was actually going to be my next question to you is like, what, what are people like, what are the judges looking for? And is there any advice for companies that are looking to kind of apply um, for, for the hardware cup? Like what, what are judges typically kind of looking for? They're looking for a good investment. <laughs> mm -hmm. You sure. know, they're all VCs, they're investors, and part okay. of our goal is to get these early stage companies in front of investors. You know, sometimes just getting in front of five or six qualified investors who invest in physical product companies, that's something that's really tough to do for some of these early stage companies if they're not connected in through an accelerator or, you know, don't have the connections themselves. And what we're doing at these uh, regional semifinals is putting these folks in front of a group of people who can invest in them. And I'll tell you, there are a number of companies who didn't even win their semifinals, who got investment because somebody, one of the judges, or maybe somebody in the audience who was an investor, saw them at the hardware cup and said, wow, that's a good idea, I want to invest. Sure. So um, that's been a really, a really exciting thing for them. Sure. So I'm curious, though. The goal is to really raise the profile of hardware companies. No, that makes sense. But at what, how early do I need to be or not be to actually submit? Like, is it a, you know, a hardware software idea that's on a napkin? Do I need to have an early prototype? Like, what's kind of the range of that? It's a pretty wide range. Um, you know, we don't have any specific limits on it, right? There's no, like, you have to be younger than this or make under this amount of money. It's, it's you know, anybody who would find a $50,000 uh, investment meaningful or who wants to get up in front of, you know, a couple hundred, a thousand people and pitch their product. Um, we've had companies that have basically, you know, they ha all they have is a pitch deck and some CAD models and like stress testing. Okay. We have people that, you know, are, you know, post revenue and we've had people who are post a lot of revenue. <laughs> sure. um, but all, you know, it's, it's sort of, it's, it's definitely a broad range. And if you are an earlier stage company, the the biggest um, challenge that you're going to have to overcome is proving, A, that it works, and B, that people want to buy it. So if you have a basic idea 
anything you can do. So like, I have a basic idea, and I put a this slide deck together, and I got three companies to pay me ten thousand dollars for it. That's great because you're proving that there is a need out there. You know, if you say, you know, the, you know, if, if you're an early stage company, that's probably your biggest challenge. Um, so if you can prove that, then you're uh, you're doing well. I guess the other thing that I'd say is that if your idea is far more technically challenging, you're going to have a, a harder time proving to the judges that you can do it and that you'll be able to deliver um, if you don't have anything working. As opposed to if you have a big idea and maybe it's more of a back of the napkin kind of thing, but um, it's less technically challenging, they're going to be less worried about the fact that you haven't already built it and don't have, haven't delivered it. Gotcha. So it's really all about, they look at things like technical risk and traction, just like any investor, right? No, that, that makes a lot of sense. So you guys are doing a lot for these companies, actually a lot more than I would say most even accelerators do for the companies that are involved. So how do you guys kind of fund this whole effort? Well, um, I'd say there are a couple of different ways. First of all, you know, the way we fund our accelerator is through hopefully exits and uh, doing well for the companies. Right. But we also have sponsors. Okay. Um, we, our national sponsors include SolidWorks. Yeah. As you heard from Leah, we're launching at SolidWorks World. Bosch, uh, they're an international uh, hardware company, everything from tools to sensors. Um, they're very big in automotive. Uh, home products, appliances. Um, uh, they're another big sponsor of ours. Um, I guess, uh, oh, Startbot, right. Startbot's a venture capital firm. Startbot, they put up the grand prize. And then we have some smaller supporters like Aero and Phillips and folks like that. Who uh, BNY Mellon is one of our sponsors. So those folks all contribute as well. And then we have people across the country who uh, attended a hardware cup pitch, loved it, invited us to do it at their place. For example, if you've heard of Galvanize, which is a co-working space that also does um, coding camps, they have locations in Seattle and um, on the East Coast as well, and I believe in Austin. Uh, they're hosting our Austin um, competition. And in Boston, Draper is uh, hosting us right near MIT campus. Tech Shop, who's one of our sponsors, they host us in some locations too, including in Pittsburgh. So we have um, folks who help us across the country. No, I, I love that. I, I think it's great, right? And I, I think that the thing that, that's interesting to me about this whole thing is that you you really are bringing kind of the entire country together, right? And, and you're making great things and you're promoting these things and you're helping these things and you guys are involved in the community. But the one thing I'm really curious about is, is there anybody that you guys have at the Hardware Cup that ends up actually going into the accelerator because maybe they're early on or do you guys kind of keep them separate or has that happened before? Um, it, a lot of times the people who end up at pitching at the regional finals, um, not always, but sometimes they tend to be a little bit later stage. Okay. Uh, sometimes. Uh, but there are a lot of people who apply to the Hardware Cup who are maybe like, you know, I've built a couple units by hand, I'm not really manufacturing it, I need some help, who might apply to our accelerator. At the end of the day, it's a pretty small fraction. I mean, we take eight companies a year. Right. Um, you know, we have hundreds of applications for the Hardware Cup. A lot of what we're trying to do is to get the profile of hardware up around the country. And I think that's one of the reasons why we've had so many partners in these different cities like reach out to us and, and you know, want to help us and want to sponsor because we might be in all different locations around the United States, but, you know, as hardware starts, you're going to have a lot of similar challenges in terms of, you know, prototyping and, you know, manufacturing uh, and all that kind of stuff. And I think Chris made a really good point that, you know, in the long run, we can only take a very small percentage of the companies who apply to us let alone the Hardware Cup. And um, one of our goals with the Hardware Cup is to also highlight what resources are available for all these folks who have hardware startups in their own cities. So we'll invite folks who are either, they have an accelerator program or they have, they're doing small batch manufacturing or maybe they do um, design and development work. We'll invite those folks 
to participate in the Hardware Cup, and we'll try to highlight them in their city. So the people, you know, there are hundreds of people sitting in the audience. Many of them are thinking about starting a hardware startup or have, are in the very early stages and have started one. We want them to know what's available right in their city that can help them. Now, some of those, you know, will apply to us, and some of them will get in. But, you know, many of them can't because it's a low acceptance rate, and we want to be helping everybody. We want them to know what's available right next to them, and maybe they'll um, make some progress and apply the next year, and, you know, we're just building the whole ecosystem that way. Sure. No, that makes a lot of sense. But sadly, we're kind of coming to the end of the show, so do you guys maybe want to close the show with mentioning where people can get more information about Innovation Works, Alpha Lab, and the Hardware Cup? Absolutely. So hardwarecup.com is where you're going to find any information you need about applying, also registering to attend all of the events. You'll find that on our website. Um, and about Alpha Lab here is alphalabgear.org and innovationworks.org. And from any of those websites, you can get to the other ones. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <Correct>. got you. <laughs> We're all connected, right? No, that's great. I Well, I really appreciate you guys taking the time out of your, your day to be on the show, and I look forward to keeping in touch with you guys, and uh, have a good rest of your day. All right. Thanks, Kevin. Great to chat. Yeah. Uh, Hope thanks, see you everybody. at the hard work, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Later. Bye. All right, thanks. Thanks for listening. The music for the show is done by Electric Mantra. You can check them out at electricmantra.com and keep them in the future.